Welcome to the Rebel Love Show, where we are a once a week broadcast from Manchester, New Hampshire, where we are pro pot, pro gun, and pro coffee. You're listening to us live on LRN.FM, IPM Nation, and now LMR. I am Ron Mathias. And I'm Shire Dude. And today our guest is none other than the one, the only, Derek J. Freeman. Real. Worms. <laughs> <laughs> so, Derek, you said you were inspired by one of our previous episodes about a THC cleanse. Yeah, you know, it just sort of happened by accident. Like, I wasn't smoking for a while. First of all, money, and I uh, was just like, it would be less money if I didn't go out and buy this cannabis. Um, so I just stopped doing that because I, like, after a while, I couldn't justify the crazy cost of, like, how much... In, the, in weight, would alcohol cost? Oh, I know. Versus <laughs> cannabis. It's not that I'm an alcohol guy. I actually hate alcohol. I hate how it makes me feel, so I, I stay away. But it was it was the cost that I was like, how much... Like, I've, I've quit smoking before. And I've added up, like, thousands of dollars that I've saved by quitting smoking cigarettes. Yeah. So I wanted to see what I could do without cannabis. And it was good. It was good. I didn't have any effects like, oh, oh, I need the cannabis. You know, people talk about uh, <laughs> like drug addiction or psychological addiction. And it wasn't anything like that. It was easy. So I went over three weeks, and now today I am packing a bowl to enjoy with you folks. Well, we feel honored that you're, you held the THC cleanse for us. We couldn't make it it's to It's difficult. Our- yeah, we were going to hold it for three weeks, but because uh, we have a hiatus on the first week of every month for the new movers party, because that's the same time that we're on. Worms. Yeah. So uh, so we actually ended up doing it right before that party instead of uh, waiting for the whole next, next episode. Uh, but yeah, we couldn't, we couldn't hold out on the, the wait. I'm impressed that you were able to go three weeks. Yeah, man. It was easy. You guys asked me to hold it, and I was like, all right. I was, I was going to... Um, you know, I was going to go get some. It wasn't anyway, easy. Anyway, this is Jack Herrera, which is my favorite strain of cannabis. Uh, high quality headies. So, who's got a lighter? Oh, you got a... Oh. That'd be an issue. Oh, we should have a lighter. <laughs> oh, there we go. Thank you, sir. Uh, you got one of the saved. benefits of having a live studio audience. I know, <laughs> right? Rebel Love Studios. Rebel Love Studios. <laughs> but uh, feel free. No, you, you, it's, it's you. This is all you. All you, right. you it'd be right honored for you right to hit it the, up first. Right into the mic. Is right. There, is there a camera on? Oh, yeah. yeah, I got a camera oh, on you right now. It's extra incriminating. Yeah, oh, so uh, while Derek's smoking, you can see him at rebelloveshow.com. If you go to live, you can see the studio cam and, and the chat room is on there. So you can chat with us. I'll be sure to jump into that chat room. Yeah, all three of us are in the chat. And plus, uh, I'm sure our uh, my royal mistress sitting in the back is also uh, in the chat. I know uh, newbies in love with her. That can uh, go around anyone else in the studio here. Sounds good to me, dude. Um, but, uh, so is this your first cleanse? Have you done this Woo! before? Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, how is the first hit? Oh man. <laughs> it's, it's hitting so me I've been it all day, so this isn't going to hit me that much. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I've done a cleanse before. Once I was thrown into a mental hospital, that was my first, uh, cleanse. The mandatory like, cleanse. Involuntary. Yeah. Wow. That sucked. And, um, you know, I couldn't even smoke cigarettes. I was a cigarette smoker at the time and I have all these images of like girl interrupted or... Um, you know, people puffing away. Mm-hmm. I actually had a... Uh, so they gave me a patch, which was not as satisfying as a cigarette. Like, you want <laughs> something in your lungs. It's that feeling of <laughs> inhaling something. I know Michael Dean is going to give me spit for talking like this, but yeah, I, I really hey, enjoy it. Look, listen. We're, we're in a generation where we're going to live long enough ah, to live forever. We're gonna be Who cares side? if you put some uh, <laughs> cigarette smoke in you or some vape juice in you? Well, whatever may happen in the future, we'll fix that. We're the cyborg generation. Yeah, we are the cyborg generation. <laughs> you know, you guys have really good coffee. I mean, I drink coffee on the regular, but I just had a sip of this studio coffee, and like, oh, this, what did you do? I, I had I had this imported. I had this imported all the way from across the street at the at the uh, <laughs> <laughs> at the convenience store. Oh wow! Oh. Is it does it have a special name or is it just generic? It's like, chock full shop? of nuts. It's just all right. That's yeah. pretty cool. Uh, no, it's not. No, it's no, no. Coffee. Well, you made it with the French press, no, the, right? The that's the true. Store, the store, not no, the you'll probably like it because I, it's not in a normal coffee maker. Even though I'm a coffee oh. snob. Oh, really? Is it a press? 
It's a French press. That's yeah, what that it has is. To be what it, is. it keeps the oils in there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, French presses make a lot of coffees taste better than normal coffee. It's the coffee. best way to make coffee. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Or a pour over uh, are good, but either one of those is a lot better than a coffee maker. Like a coffee maker, you're not boiling the water hot enough to get the real flavor. You know, although my, my new favorite is uh, we're pro coffee, so we can talk about this. Yeah, it's, we, we um, haven't had a coffee segment yet. We have cooking segments on the <laughs> show, but <laughs> we're not coffee segment. It's uh, cold brew coffee, right? It's What's where that? you brew the coffee like for like forty hours, and oh, uh, no, nobody got time. For that. <laughs> and then it's like fantastic, and then it uh, keeps for a while. But you 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 definitely have to have foresight at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm a, a kind of honored that I have a coffee expert in the house. Sometimes he makes like amazing like lattes and what have you. Well, so yeah. You haven't made some in a while. It's, you've it's been, been a while. You've been lacking I've, on the Well, on I've been on a different beverage. beverage making venture recently. But uh, well, you're a barista professionally, right? Yes, correct. So you're making coffee all day. Right, have right. You, have you ever done a cleanse of coffee? Yeah, actually, I, I uh, one time, this was back in like 2009 or, tw- or, or 2010, um, I tried to give up coffee and I had a migraine for three days. And then I was like, this is stupid. I can get it for free whenever I want. I'm going back to it. Yeah. Yeah. So an addiction that's free is hard to beat. Right. Right. Cause I mean, that's <laughs> usually when I try to quit something, it's cause, Oh, this costs too much money, you know, trying to save some money. But yeah. Well, I mean, for me, I don't care if I'm addicted to coffee or not. It makes me feel good. And I love the taste of it. I hear that um, people who drink coffee live longer. Aren't there studies about that? There might be. That's probably the case. Well, we're going to live forever anyway. Yeah, I know. We're going to live forever Regardless, anyways. they fit more in a, li- a single lifetime because they're moving so much faster. <laughs> yeah. You know, one thing you have to do, if you're not, uh, if you're not doing a lot of coffee, you need to at least do uh, some sort of, uh, you know, caffeinated beverage of some sort or another to keep up here. How are you feeling after the first uh, buzz? We were going to talk to you. Oh, about yeah. Uh, we have some sad news for you. Yeah. It's not worth the wait. Well, yeah, 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 right? I'm like, I feel good. I feel high like I have before. Don't, but don't get me wrong. Like, my my like, first night, like we smoked a lot and it was well worth it. I was, Actually, I was like the flying. first 48 hours. Yeah. It was just like amazing. Now, it's, it's just come plateau. My tolerance feels like it's right back where it used to be. So, eh. huh? we're That's honored that we inspired you, don't but know. don't. I still liked it. Audience <laughs> at home, don't do this. <laughs> don't try this at home. <laughs> don't kids. do this, kids. Just keep doing drugs. Don't get off of them. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't worth it for us. I would never go back and do it again. I, oh, I might no. do it just to give it a relax, just to take a break. But not, I mean, the whole purpose of the cleanse was to make pot feel better for me. You know, yeah. I really didn't do it for, uh, I mean, I was spending a lot of money going through a lot of pot. So I just wanted to lower the tolerance level. I didn't want to, um, I didn't do it for like financial reasons. Oh, I can't afford pot right now. I'm going to lay off for a bit. That wasn't the case. Well, I hear you. Like, I, I kind of made it sound like that. Like, oh, I laid off pot because I didn't have the money for it. But it, that's not it. I want to be more clear. I couldn't justify the cost. I'm like, look at prohibition. Like, look how much more expensive this little, I can hardly feel how heavy this is in my hand. How, why is that expensive when you could grow it at home and it would be free? And it's a, it's a weed. It literally grows everywhere. I, so I don't, like, everyone could have this at home. It would be a free thing. I mean, the amount of resources that we spend in our daily lives to buy that when exactly that should be freely accessible. People should be able to grow it in their gardens. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I'm thinking like how many ounces of 40 ounce of beer I used to be able to get at the store. You know, this is really cheap beer, steel reserve for like, I think it was like $3 or maybe so 40 ounces. I don't know. Um, one ounce of really good pot going to run you like maybe around three hundred dollars yeah so like the disparity in these drugs is like so freaking unjustifiable well i mean i'm like there's no reason for that other than it's in the black market so i don't want to um i don't want to support it as much as i used to i gotta find a way another way like either i gotta move to a place where it's legal to grow and do it myself or find some other way i hear you more cooking segments coming up on the Rebel Love Show. Hmm. What 
we still are live on LMR and uh, YouTube. Liberty activists around the country. Oh right, yeah. yeah. So are you gonna throw the chat in the? So what will? Yeah. Into um, it again. I that was, was a cool shot. Working on that. I was working on getting the hey, chat. Also, you were hitting record on Wirecast. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks That's network, good. you can make a difference by uniting there libertarian you go, buddy. thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local. And I was having, I was having some trouble getting. Uh, I know, I saw. You gotta do it in Chrome, dude. In Chrome? Yeah, go in Chrome. Uh, are you? Are we live on YouTube yet? Yeah. Okay, so we're live on YouTube. Mm -hmm. wrestling superstars like and what was the other issue? You guys really are having an impact. Mm -hmm. Like I said, uh, a lot of nice. Where I am yeah, for some reason I am unable to get the live. chat room. I'm going through a chat.lrn.fm and uh, let's go to lrn.fm. We're just doing it from the Rebel Up show site. I tried doing that too. Look at that. Oh, the, is the chat down? The server. No, the chat's live. I'm in the chat. You're in the chat? So I'm, I'm unable to get in the chat. Let me right see now. if I can get in. I'm on it at rebelloveshow.com. Yeah. I click the button that says live. Computer. And now I join the chat room and can see the live. I, I, can't, I don't know if I can see the live video though. Free talk live in front of people looking for. I don't even try to view it. I don't want to stream that. Yeah. Okay. You can help by Let me joining see if I can the AMP in. program for just five dollars uh, a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting. It says it's live, but I'm not seeing. Uh, if you I'm can't seeing listen darkness. to Liberty Radio Network's internet streams, free oh, satellite, that's the line. Yeah, that's that's my that's my fault. You can listen to LRN. It'll be fixed now. Any phone, okay. Anywhere. Yeah, I was I was editing. A, I'm in. Uh, I'm in on it. An alternate pack of sniffers in there. A few others. Okay. It's yeah. Long distance call. So make sure you're familiar Just with now, your phone's call sign. The Liberty Radio Network listen lines are locked into our stream. Yes, please. That's fine. Sit down. Two one three four nine three zero three. No, go ahead. That's two one three four nine three zero three zero nine. Um, Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of people. Yeah, I think I'm behind the times on that. I think I really am. Explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various. <laughs> Why are you doing that? <laughs> well, I'm not worried about safety. Last year, if you missed it, visit Keenvention.com. I can't believe that even exists. Well, this is kind of lame. I'm not really close to that. Try not. I know that's an argument that people make all the violence, but that's not really something you can speak to. Don't delay. Reserve your tickets now. Maybe it's because I'm running this, but that shouldn't that shouldn't matter. No, that shouldn't matter. And look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Hey Chad, if you're listening, Chad is trying to get in. He's having technical issues apparently, and it's, yeah, it's just this computer too. Uh, let's see. Automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, right. healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, yeah, here's used and more. It's a department. The connection was reset. The connection to the server was reset while the page was loading. Get all your shopping done. Get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit the Liberty Radio Network. When you shop at Amazon via shop.lrn.fm. <laughs> New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at SurvivorMax.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with a chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Welcome to the Rebel Love Show. We are a once-a-week broadcast here in Manchester, and Derek J is our guest. Yeah. And uh, Derek... I uh, started uh, going back into some Flaming Freedom archives, and I came across an episode that you guys did at uh, Liberty Forum, and you had Allie Havens as your oh, yeah. guest. It was great, but at sometime during that episode, uh, both you and Allie were saying how adding another person into a poly relationship would somehow, somehow be demeaning. I, I kind of wanted you to explain what, what that exactly meant. 
Hmm. I, I don't. Maybe I misspoke. I don't think it's demeaning. You felt maybe like adding clarify. adding one more sexual partner might demean the relationship. That's like almost a direct quote. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I guess that's just how I would feel. Like I'm not saying it, it's a. It would truism. demean every relationship, but you're just saying that you would yeah, feel that for, for yourself. Yeah. For me, I um, I don't know. I'm really bad at relationships, honestly, so I should put that up front. Yeah, um, I, I heard your story on uh, Freedom Fiends. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah that I was, was going to bring that up. That was honestly the most personal and vulnerable I've been on the radio ever. Yeah, you, you were going very personal, but I was kind of surprised by it. Yeah. What episode was that? The, the very last Freedom last Fiends. One, yesterday, or oh, okay. the day before. Um, Sunday night. It's, uh, what, May 19th today. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Just to, uh, 2015 as a reference. Um, so does it demean relationships? Yeah. So it's, to me, uh, I want a full attention of my partner. Uh -huh. I want to give full, my full attention to one partner. I don't feel like I could do more. So, and, uh, I, um, would want the same for me. Well, you know, it's like sort of a, the, the, who was the co-host on that show at that time? I, I forgot Chandler his name. St. Chandler St. Pierre. Cool guy. Um, you kept bringing up how you would say you, you were afraid like being stuck in a relationship with someone that you didn't like or something along those lines. Yeah, that's right? true also. See, a beauty of like uh, with polyamory is if someone's not perfect, no one's a perfect fit sometimes, you know, <laughs> but you can add on, you can still explore what is what you need. You don't have to have that fear. It's a whole huge point with, uh, you know, that I think with being poly is that you have multiple choices and multiple options to fulfill your life. You're not stuck on oh. one path. Yeah, yeah, I see that. It's sort of like, I don't know, I got this uh, gardening image from what you were just describing. I've been gardening today. So it's sort of like a root uh, needs multiple paths to reach for water. You yeah, know, like, yeah. Uh, the, the, the plant needs you can water. Plant, you, you can, can water plant. it from different directions, right. different areas. Yeah, so it right. gets you know, the most treatment, the most uh, support right. that that plant needs. Right. One of the examples that I could give of, of something like that was uh, a poly relationship that I was in where um, uh, the gal I was with, she was building a, like a, like a, a piece of uh, furniture. It was like this uh, thing to sit on by the window. And she wanted my help. Oh, I'm, you know, the boyfriend. Got to help with that. And I'm not that guy. I'm, I don't build stuff. I don't use like hammers and nails and shit. And <laughs> she was dating another guy who was that guy. And so she called him to come over while we were hanging out. And I was like, hey, look, you know, until he gets here, I'll help you out with a little bit. But you know, he could finish like the hard stuff. And so I built like half the thing. And then she's like, uh, the, the guy shows up. We hang out for a little bit, the three of us. And then oh. she's like, all right, well, I'll see you later. And then because it was their date night anyway. So oh. I, I bounced and then I didn't have to be that guy who had to struggle, who had to build the thing, who had to be the person that I wasn't. And she still had her, her thing built. Okay. Right. All right. I mm -hmm. see that. That's that's really nice. That worked out. Right. So you, you could have different people for different wants and needs. Um, that's what I'm saying. That's like the benefit, I guess. But mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, you know, polyamory Wait, doesn't what, solve what, what all these problems. What are some like of your a, what, what are some of your like uh, holdoffs of going poly? Like, but look, before I answer that, it sounds to me like what Shire Dude is saying is like uh, this is another analogy that came to me while while hearing you. It's sort of like uh, oh well. You can have more than one lane. Like you're going somewhere, uh, there yeah. are multiple lanes. You know, um, why would you stick with just one when there are all these other infinite ones available? Um, I don't know. So, okay, and then your your question. Yeah, because what what are some of your? I mean, you say you want to it's just one person, but why? Cause so I feel uh, as if like you. I feel like you're like. I mean, first off, let me, let's be honest. You're in the Shire, and uh, polyamory is contagious. So it's, you're I have not been bit. Bit. <laughs> So far, I have not been bit by the bug. Okay. <laughs> but usually most people are like somewhat curious or maybe, I mean, it seems like. I don't know. And I feel like you're on the fence. I feel like one day you will be. I don't know. I, now I'm thinking, because you guys are asking me questions. I, maybe I un, honestly haven't thought of before. Maybe should. But it, uh, not to get all Molyneux, but it, maybe it's my parents because they split. I was a child of divorced parents. Yeah. My parents split when I was nine. And I acted... And I, I swear that I felt, because that's what I said, that it didn't bother me. But they were like, you're going to have to deal with this one way or another. Like, you have to deal with it sometime. And maybe I, I never uh, worked with that. And now I'm like, I have to be together with someone who I'm going to be with forever. Even though I'm not planning on having kids. Like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that was an influence. 
Well, even if you had kids or whatnot, you can still have that in a poly relationship. You know, I mean, you can, there's poly families that live here in the Shire. Right. You know? I don't know. Uh, I haven't wanted to be a part of a poly relationship. You know, okay. I, it seems really awesome. Like, I applaud the people who have uh, poly families, like raising kids. I think that's awesome that uh, kids would have more adult influences in their lives during their upbringing. I think that's great. I don't know. It's just not for me. Okay, I understand that. You know, it's not for it's not for everyone. But I, I just figure I heard all your concerns on your last show. You know, especially you you being afraid, and I, I just thought, you know, poly just there, that doesn't exist in poly relationships. You know, uh, don't get me wrong. Just just like monogamous relationship, you don't want to be with someone you don't want to be with. But uh, the way I view it is, any partner I ever have. They're free to go at any time and vice versa. There's no like con con uh, social contract, so to speak, where like they we have to be together. Uh, you know, um, they're they're a lot of the time when people stay in relationships that they for too long, right past their expiration date. Yeah, um, it's because they're of their fear of being single. And of course, if you have you know three other people that you're with, it's less likely that you'll fear that, right? Yeah. Well, another thing that's great with being poly is uh i don't know if you've experienced this, like how, how much communication do you have with your partner um like about when, what's well, going on have, how you're feeling stuff like that like how often does that happen with a life partner or a sexual partner just a life partner not a sexual partner like a, a um, boyfriend like a, a committed lot. relationship I, I, com I communicate a lot okay because my my experience when i was uh monogamous like i I, we didn't have like that kind of communication level. I never experienced that until I was poly. Like you have to express like how you feel with the other, about the other people being in the relationship all the time, uh, and especially uh, uh, negotiating, talking about when you're going to be with somebody else. You know, you have to look that per that you're the partner in the eyes and say, "Hey, I want to be going out with this girl or this guy or whatever. You're going out with this person, you know, on another night, you know, and you have to you have to tell them." And vice versa. Yeah, you, you're free to actually talk about your feelings for other yeah. people while you're in that one relationship. So you're you're almost making and, and on top of that, like you know, with like me and Anne, like I can talk to her about everything. You know, I can talk to her about any other relationship I have, and she'll I, she'll um uh you know give me advice. You know, that's like communicate. It's like having you know the person you love who's also your best friend at the same time. That's a beautiful thing in poly. I want to get you. At one point, <laughs> <laughs> I would have convinced you. You bit. <laughs> you bit. We'll be back in the next segment where uh, Derek comes out of the closet being Polly. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. Being held this year from July the 26th. <laughs> The Cato Institute's state-of-the-art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program uh, brings Where's together the outstanding Why are we not faculty still? and participants. That's hey, dude. Hey, dude. And it's around the globe with everyone sharing. Uh, can you put the logo in the shot that's on us? Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop no thinking after they got out of school. All right, where are we hitting up next? don't dude? want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value All liberty. Right. You'll learn... White the white lighter. Oh, okay. People from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, Cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, oh, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at Cato.org. In local news, 23-year-old <laughs> graffiti artist Adam Zane has captured the heart of 19-year-old college sophomore Jessica Tissolo. Zane, who goes by the graffiti handle Slice, met Tissolo last summer at an annoyingly self-aware dive bar where the talentless artist caught Tissolo's eye with his cliched sleeve tattoos of trite Japanese imagery like and the fact drops. that he was wearing a winter hat indoors in the middle of June. Somebody made this. Somebody sent me a, uh, for those of you listening to this, somebody sent me an Ian Freeman soundboard. Uh, it looks pretty fantastic. <laughs> oh, by the way, we can finally now uh, lore and raise the LRN feed. Right. Going to, like, out to YouTube and everything else, and then my own recording. Yeah. yeah. Joe, it, it, I told you it works, right? Yeah, I told you the pub, pub crawl. So, yeah, I, I just got to remember to turn it up now. That's my thing. Like, during when the break hits, I got to turn it up for the bumper. 
visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. I love my magic mud. When, I'm sorry. Whenever I hear trust. whenever I hear the onion news I break, I think that's the beginning of, the, of like <laughs> sometimes it is. Yeah, sometimes it's almost always. It. It. So I paid attention yeah. when I brushed the first time. My so okay. I gotta get show clock. Is it is it true that LMR is hearing us right now? Yeah. Really? Should be. Do they do they not have any commercial breaks? Mm, I don't I have no idea. It's just huh. going straight out to them. Our oh, source. Wow. Yeah. So. Yeah. Huh. Open you can use Bitcoin. Interesting. MyMagicMud.com. Open. Did you know that you so yeah, if you're on LMR, uh, you should be watching the cam at RebelLoveShow.com. Click on live. Our signal covers nearly all of North America. All you hey, what do you want to hit up next, dude? Sky, an affordable receiver, and a dish as small as 30 inches. No we're going to go with the finale. Let's bring that right. Yeah. Plus, yeah. If you're a and then, uh, yeah, well, let's just follow the list down because I think I put them in a, a nice Yeah, order. I think they're in a pretty good order. Yeah. Get details at sat.lrn.fm. That's S-A-T dot L-R-N I love that voice. What if we need to get that re recording, man? We gotta make that like to move to I want to like put like commercials in the podcast first mm. and then go out. This are joining the Free State Project, which is over seventy percent. I want to call out you on your please. And they're already making a move to New Hampshire. The successes are no, I kind of want to proving the Free State Derek, Project. I mean, I'm movement and no longer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was good. <laughs> okay, all right, but uh, yeah, since uh, media capital of the world, talk radio, and more all originating here, though it's more than just activism with regular social events each week. See what's happening uh, at freekeen.com sure. and get connected with video, audio, video, books, audio, forum, bitcoins. You can download and use in your area at freekeen. Maybe I should just mock the commercials <laughs> during our breaks. <laughs> and the LMR will get them. It's like the the mocked commercials of LRN.fm. It's a whole new show. <laughs> Whenever Cecilia's on, she she does that. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. And uh, this past weekend, there was uh, an official, an actual official release. Though, if you were in the chat room last week when we were on, which we air, if you're listening to the podcast, we do air uh, live uh, at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Uh, I just go to rebelloveshow.com and you'll find it right there. You click live, you can watch us. You can also listen to us on uh, LRN, LMR, and IPM. Uh, but uh, if you're in the chat, Shire Dude actually leaked this finale <laughs> for our loyal listeners in the chat room. I got a kind of, I got kind of leak happy with that. Yeah, you did. That's episode. cool though. But no, that's cool because like it makes it more personal. Like the only like the, the who's who that knows you, right? And, like you know, people that like actually really pay attention to what you put out got it. I what I did was I released it at like different levels. So like the insiders got it, and then the people in the next circle and the next and, circle. And what was this that you released? It was the the Shire Dude season finale. So episode ten. I've been working on this season for a year. Woo! <laughs> Bravo, sir. <laughs> and uh, It's been a whole Shire year since the last one. More than a Shire year. It's been an actual year. It's So it's been like... Oh, since you started. Yeah, since yeah, I started yeah, the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I'm just saying it was like a Shire year from the previous episode. Oh, from episode nine, you yeah. About, you used to bat them out like every couple of weeks. I was doing them weekly for a little while when I, when I was new and I had the energy of a brand new person. But then I got tired. But um, yeah, yeah, and I released the finale, and uh, it's uh, available. It's available on multiple outlets, including RebelLoveShow.com and like FreeKeen.com. I posted it a few different places, and uh, it's gotten really a really good um, reception. Derek, what would you say? Would you say that um, that Shire dude, like his his content, his uh, his his sketch, well, his comedy, what have you, of Shire dude? Would you say that that kind of uh, What's what I'm looking for? Uh, encapsulates like what the culture is like a little bit here, uh, <laughs> or is it even even, or is it even close? No, I I think it captures the weirdest parts of, um, like everyday people, and it makes it into uh, I don't know. It's just a delightful art form to watch. What do you think I, about I like it, the finale specifically? Like, yeah. Oh man, uh, the finale. 
I shared it with uh, multiple people. Nice. Um, I Nathan in Texas uh, was one who uh, he hadn't come across your work yet. Oh wow! Very, but you know Nathan in Texas, frequent caller to uh, Free Talk Live and and multiple LRN FM shows, um, and uh, now a subscriber and follower of of Shire Dude. Cool man. Also. Uh, one of my exes was like, I'm getting married. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. Here, you have to watch this episode of Shire, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it was the next thing I said. He was so hurt, but I think it was more important, honestly. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Um, one of the interesting things was um, I put a lot of poly references. There are a lot of poly references in that in episode. That. And th there's a good reason for that. I had some excess um, poly footage. From an educational video that I was working on, but that's another story that we'll get into in a yeah, second. Yeah, we'll, we'll touch that in another segment. The, the, we'll, we'll bring it back. Don't a, I know you're you're grit, you're grit. You know, you're smiling. You <laughs> want to talk about? It. You know exactly what we're. It's a we're segment referring of to. its own. Yeah, anyway, it's its own segment. So there's all sorts of like little poly like snippets, and like a, a big part of the storyline in part two is all poly. I'd say a good half or quarter of the, my uh, my talk yeah. at Liberty Forum on polyamory was featured in part of that. Episode. Right, the talk that actually is just getting released just now. In fact, if you go to the uh, the Shire Dude YouTube, uh, it's, it's uploaded now. It should be processing, so it should <laughs> it be ready. Should be yeah, it should be ready any any second. Very I, exciting. It is. It, it's very exciting. That's actually one. That's actually my. This is your uh, talk at the polyamory panel. At, it, it was at it was Forum. me and the artist formerly known as O Girl doing a talk on polyamory at Liberty oh, Forum. I remember it. You yes. were there? Did you watch it? Yes, I was there for the tail end, and I caught some video of it. Oh, really? Oh, nice. Yeah, oh, it's never been that. released. Oh. <laughs> I'm holding on. <laughs> well, he already released the whole thing, the whole, so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where is it? Shire uh, Dude. The uh, Shire Dude YouTube yeah. uh, account. So okay. if you go to YouTube, look up Shire Dude. That's like the newest upload. There um, was so much... <clears throat> Well, what are we, well, I'll hold on to it. <laughs> Where I was going with that. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry. Now I'm, I'm also posting it in like polyamory groups and all these poly people like in the polyamory Reddit. And so all these poly people are seeing Liberty Forum. Oh, wow. And like inside the quill and like, you know, all these Whoa. weird people and like, you know, some like culture. Some yeah, culture. yeah, yeah. You're sharing it with uh, new communities. That is super cool. Yeah. So it's like, you know, even though this is mostly you know, a, a show within the Liberty scene, you know, but we talk about poly literally like every episode. Every episode. It's, you know, it's like, the poly podcast. It's becoming, yeah. that's what it's becoming. Yeah. It's weird. Like the name of the show, like I had the name of the show before it was poly. Well, it included love. I know. And now it just seems like being poly is like, you know, of it's kind of like rebelling against like what's, uh, what love is supposed to be. Did you have love on your arm before? No, I got this. Uh, I got that. Uh, I love free. I got this um, about three months ago. Two months. Yeah, three oh, months ago. Oh no way! Yeah. All right, you've got love on your arm. Yeah, I got that in. Uh, I got that in January. No, the one on your right. Oh, that's live. In yeah, in love. Right. Yeah, my two ideologies. It's on the inside of my arm. So if I ever hug someone, I'm embracing my ideologies to that one person. Oh yeah. wow. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually more, a lot more meaning to both of them too, but that's one thing I do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is my two ideologies. So, so yeah, like this, you know, just like Flaming Freedom is like the gay liberty show. I think we've become the, the poly, poly liberty yeah, show. We are the poly liberty. What other show is there where there's uh, basically two volunteers or anarchists, and uh, we are both poly, and we have poly people on? At most of the time. No, oh, I'm not accepting your labels, man. Oh, but I yeah. know. You're not labels. For lack I know. Of, you don't even have a poly label. <laughs> For lack of a better poly, language. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come what on. What would you call it, Trier Dude, if not polyamory? I am, I am in polyamorous relationships, but I'm not a polyamorous person. Or you, like applying the label to me just doesn't feel Interesting. right. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You like to be amorphous. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, I'm going to call myself Amorphous. That's the new label that I'm accepting <laughs> in rebellion to labels. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this show could, uh, you know, reach out to poly people that aren't even in the Liberty scene, maybe, you know, like don't e the people are just in a, they're in all in the poly stuff. Like there are poly podcasts out there, you know, like there's a whole poly scene of YouTubers and all that jazz. In the same vein, I did, I shared the, the Shire Dude episode, episode two called Doge Fest on the Dogecoin Reddit, and I got a ton of Doge donations and people in the comments saying, 
we're going to go to Porkfest because of this. Like, oh, these are my Whoa, people. Oh, really? Yeah. So, I mean, there actually might be Dogecoin users who have come to Porkfest because of Dogecoin. <laughs> Did you just say these are my people? <laughs> yeah. There's a comment there that says, these are my people. And then like runs towards group in, in little quotes. And then like yeah. in the episode. No, that's a comment on the Reddit post of the episode. <gasps> yeah. So somebody saw that video and was like, I need to go to Porkfest now. Wow. Right. At yeah. least that one person. Uh, Did you meet this person? Well, this was this was after last pork fest, so <sighs> I haven't met any, you know, coming to pork. I mean, this pork <laughs> fest though, uh, there's going to be two poly talks at Alt Expo and right. then there's also the poly party that you're organizing. Yeah, I'm co-hosting the the poly party. Whoa. So it, it really, you know, even if they don't show, it's still poly fest. Is the you know? poly party going to be like the big gay dance party where m most of the people there are straight? Um, and, or are not poly, I mean. I don't know. It's well. It's for poly people and poly curious people. I mean, we'll probably get the population of Manch there if all the poly people show up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, from what I get, it's basically it's a, a have a good time, but also for instead of it being where um, I don't know, Cecilia said this best, uh, instead of it being like a panel where you're talking in front of everyone to ask a question or something like that, this way they can talk to other people in the at the party on a personal level to ask questions about like a poly lifestyle. In a more right. intimate fashion. What's the most common question you get about polyamory? Ooh, you want to hit that first? Oh, do that. common question? Yeah. What the mm, most people yeah. uh, probably jealousy. ask me about jealousy? Yeah, yeah. jealousy. <laughs> <laughs> Same question. Jealousy. Yeah. Don't yeah. you get jealous? Aren't you? Aren't you not cool with somebody else with your woman? Yeah. I'm like mm. ah, what? Yeah. I I just tell them I just go over to my other partner. Right. <laughs> mm, I hear you on the lack of ownership thing. You don't want to own your partner. Yeah. You know? That's the beauty of polyamory is uh, you don't own that person. You own yourself. Just like you own yourself, period. More poly talk and come back. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that brings back. The so, power through the show, right? Um, <laughs> Are, are, can we? Are, are we gonna uh, hit that? That thing? Are we, is, that, oh, is that good yeah. to talk about? Yeah, we kind of skipped around that. I know. Oh, you got some today. Yeah, yeah. We should do bulleted list. It kind of keeps us focused on uh, um, what to bring up next. Even though every topic becomes polyamory. Yeah. Hey, let, let, let's keep passing the the bong here. You want me to fill it or? Guns and weed. The Road to Freedom, a film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Bagabi. Oh, thank you. What are you looking for? What, what, why, are your, why is your quest? You, you seem like you have a very finite thing that you're looking for. Yeah. No. Are you on OKC? I Tinder and I saw. I mean, yes, I am. But in Keen, I'm not because the nearest match is like 43 miles away. So it's Keen. I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, go full match. Or just. I was gonna like post a raw speech that these inspiration sunrise memes no, and talk lives post pass no, by your news from <laughs> like them comment it gives us more exposure if you don't see our posts <laughs> click like at facebook.freetalklive.com right that's hardcore over it to <laughs> <get> <laughs> notifications <laughs> it's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit Ooh, further I know you're busy but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something <laughs> well, how often do you do fiends what nights do you normally do it you know next time there's a pub crawl here you're more than welcome to come to the pub crawl and then use the studio to do fiends because that was off for last time but you didn't come to the pub crawl you just came to this but, so can somebody hear us when, if we talk into the microphones yeah we're still live on LMR and we're still live on YouTube okay so, so instead of talking away from the microphone I might yeah well have might as well I mean we're recording on the on the commercial breaks um, no I'm going to you'll find out 
I, I don't think I could have a co-host from connecting to Fiends to GCN through Fiend Phone because, or maybe we would both connect to GCN. I'm not really sure how we would do it long distance. Maybe Fiend Phone can do it. Do you guys have Fiend Phones at this station in the center for the? Yeah, <laughs> you use this studio. I had to right, install right, right. it. Yeah, it's here. It's on. It's only time it's ever been used. Yeah. But we were two people live in studio. What I'm saying is, I don't know if another person could connect to it. Show. Could. I do several shows. I do Freedom Fiends on Sunday nights. I do Free Talk Live on Monday nights. Cop Lock Radio. Yes. On Wednesday, I do Cop Lock Radio. And on Thursday, it's Flaming Freedom. Are you tired of your tax Sorry. funding? Oh, oh, it's I always say, oh, how long? Who See, you're on it. I gotta get it like a, I gotta be. I don't know. I don't even have my headphones. Yeah, I know. Well, you're more of a pro than I am. <laughs> well, I, I'm on LRM like half the week. Yeah, I only do it once a week. You do it like multiple nights. Who used to run the military industrial complex. <laughs> <laughs> This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. <laughs> Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. And uh, yeah, please, please pass the bong, Derek. Thank you, sir. We're here with Derek J. Derek talking J. mostly about polyamory. I know, but we uh, we have some uh, news to announce uh, with Derek. Well, you do. Yeah, anyways. Well, well, uh, you know, or I don't maybe. know if I'm officially accepted yet, but we were talking about uh, Flaming Freedom and its need for co-hosts. Yeah. Yeah. You have put in. I, I required naked pictures for <laughs> and for applications for new hosts. Well, yeah, you, you, I mean, you have to have naked pictures. You and guys I, take your clothes off every episode, so I mean, you need to see what you're, is going to be on YouTube. You just you got to have uh, something on there. No, mostly I want to have a collage of all of the co-hosts, and I want to make it out of the application pictures. So, oh, I'd have to like, take a better picture the, then. Yeah, <laughs> this coffee's really good, but I didn't see it through the microphone. <laughs> Um, yeah, Dale just quit Flaming Freedom, which was really sad to me because it was the first thing I ever did on the radio. Mm -hmm. or on, you know, but that was like coming, right? Like he said he wasn't going to do it forever. He had quit once before saying, you know, he couldn't put in the energy for it basically. And I get that. It's a thankless job. You guys must know doing yep. yeah, <laughs> shows it's, like these. No, they, people don't know how much time and effort you have to do to put into this. It's, it's, I don't know how you do like multiple nights. Like this drives me crazy just doing one night. Yeah, it's a lot. So he um, is going to go on dates instead and I can't blame him. That's a great thing. So uh, I asked for some co-hosts on the Gay Narcists Facebook page, and instantly the Gay Narcists <laughs> responded to the call and posted nudes in response to my inquiry. This is uh, a public group also, by the way. Rubble Mistress posted one too. Yeah. Um, yep. So yep. we had your, all everyone's <laughs> entry, and uh, I want everyone to be on the show, everyone who's applied so far. That's um, awesome. Even this guy Bruce, who I don't even know and have never heard of before, he'll be the <laughs> he'll be the wild card. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, anyone who uh, responded on the Facebook page, which is uh, the facebook.com slash groups slash gay narcists. Yeah, that's a fun group where we have like a million admins. Everyone is an admin, so <laughs> that's that's, cool. that's sort of a. I've never been a part of a Facebook group quite like that because anyone can change the title, the description. You can change everything about <laughs> what the group is. <laughs> no rule. No no rules. It changes quite frequently. Yeah. But yeah, everyone is in charge because uh, as soon as you join, you're made an admin. That's cool. That's a really cool idea. You're uh, you're queer, right? Me? Yeah. No. No. Okay. No. Well, you can't be a part of it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Shire dude is in the group. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. This is correct. Okay. <laughs> So, Flaming Freedom, 
I kind of feel like flaming freedom is to uh, uh, gay anarchists as RLS is to poly anarchists. What? Yeah. Flaming freedom, because it's basically for, you know, gay anarchists, you know, well, it's ran by gay anarchists. Yeah. Yeah. It's a show just for us. Finally, there is like <laughs> a show for that ditch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So we're covering the other ditch. We're covering the poly anarchist ditch. Yeah. yeah. It's, I like the word I heard recently, narrow casting. It's the opposite of broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make your show super broad. Don't touch like all these other subjects and all these other things. Just focus on a little tiny niche and make it that niche. Yeah. Niche shows are great though. Yep. You know, because they, they show like, you know, what those people talk about in like their like situations. You know, I, I love niche shows. I can't believe we're finally at that stage in human evolution like all of my ancestors who must have worked so hard to keep a roof uh, ahead um and now we get to make talking mp3s and share them with our friends about you know <laughs> whatever top we get to have these conversations afar with not just like the the general population which is like what radio does but with the internet population which is like very specific people who are seeking this kind of content it's like Amazing that we're finally at this stage. So yeah, of course I want to do that, and, and uh, find find my people, like Shire Dude said. You know these uh, the Doge lovers, right. or whatever your interests are. Speaking of, have you had a lot of success uh, with Flaming Freedom approaching like the gay community about liberty? No, <laughs> it's not yeah. about that for me. It's okay. about the. I don't want to proselytize anymore. Like I just want to sing my note or sing my song with the people who also hear the music. No, I you know? I, I 100% agree with that. Like we don't uh, this show we never like do educational stuff. Like we don't like say why you should be free or I mean we talk about poly. We don't say why you really should be poly all that much. I mean we just talk about what it's like being poly. Um, but like we in, in any of those things, like this show is more just us shooting the breeze and talking about what our lives are like here, mm. not uh, or and what's going on, right? Not this, this show isn't the poly panel. This show is the poly party. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, exactly. Like we're, this is not toward people waking them up to do what they need to do. <laughs> I have the you documents know. wake up sheet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not that at all. I know you're showing that either, but one thing I always liked, uh, like listening to podcasts and stuff like that is listening to shows that are, they're already after that point. You know what I'm saying? They're not educational. It's like seeing stuff. Uh, I love those kind of like shows. What? I don't know any. Well, I mean, I would say multiple different shows. Um, some liberty shows, like uh, like Flame Freeman, like Hot Black Radio, and stuff oh, like that. Oh, liberty you know? shows. Like, but also other shows out there. Like, there's there's I'm, shows I listen to that are poly. There's shows I listen to that are tech. You know, there's um, there's a uh, vaping podcast I listen to. Um, but those yeah, but shows do are. They, do they get off their topic and talk about their personal lives? No, sometimes stuff? they do. Yeah, they have. Yeah. They actually have characters that are on the show. Like they're the returning guests and stuff like that. Wow. You build uh, relationships with because they have quirks with them and like things they're talking about. You know, and they'll bring up their family issues or something like that during the show and mm. stuff like that. Um, and you build relationships with those other characters, but. Um, but yeah, there's different shows that are very, very niche, and they're they're in that scene. They're in those scenes talking about what like I, I'm listening to like a vape podcast, and they're talking about how they have this hatred for like the vape scene now because it's changed since a year ago, and they're wow. talking about drama going on with different people in the scene. And I'm like, that doesn't sound that doesn't yeah. sound uh, anything like the Liberty community, you know. I have never heard drama before. It's it's always like heartwarming to know that there's other scenes out there, like in that have like media people that do podcasts and YouTube and stuff like that, and they have the exact same issues. There have been a lot of Facebook posts about like, man, why is there drama in the Liberty community like constantly now? And I think it's because we're big enough to have drama, like you know, and we're more connected enough to have drama. Mm. It actually might be a symptom of a community forming. Wow, so it might actually be a good sign, right? And then well, the next step is to find a way to healthily deal with it, right? Like, w there's got to be some uh, free market, voluntarist alternative to um, right. all of this bickering, some way we could move forward really productively. Now, a lot of, a lot of anarchists and volunteers listening to this are going to be like yelling at their screen or whatever right now saying, mediation, arbitration, oh, contracts. That's all, that's, that's all what you have to do all the time. Hey, that's been happening. Uh, I just walked past a, a mediation performed by Mark Edge. Oh, uh, wow. Free wow. Talk Live recently. Oh, wow. So, I mean, there are, these things are alternatives that happen in the Shire. True, but... 
I'm not sure if they can solve all of our problems. And yeah, I mean, sometimes there's issues that happen and there, there's not going to be a resolution. There won't be. Right. And no mediation action. or arbitration would be a waste of time at that point. Yeah. Because there's nothing's going to be solved. So at that point, what's the point of an arbitration? Yeah. I'm talking about all the he said, she said threads that come up. Oh. Right. On yeah. like Facebook. Okay. And they're so, like hundreds and hundreds of comments long. And everyone's talking about, oh, well, you should have mediation right now. But it's already after the fact, like it's blown up. So then what do you think is the right thing to do? At that point, um, I, don't, I didn't really want to get into this on the show, but I, I think I kind of have a somewhat of a solution that's not really implemented anywhere. Um, it's an idea that Davi Barker and I came up with along with um, Tim, who we met during Liberty Forum. And, um, and Davi wouldn't have been there had we not saved him. That's true. Way. Yeah, yeah. Davi would have been stuck at the airport. Yeah, he would have been stuck at the airport at like four in the morning <laughs> had we not saved him yeah. and took him to a Bitcoin meetup. Yeah. Thanks for bringing Davi, guys. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome, Davi. We saved him. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, so we were all talking about this problem of the drama threads and like how to, how to kind of get past it. And um, he, we were talking about, I don't remember, this was pretty late at night. It was about uh, squashing beef. And so, like, is that a metaphor for something, or is that well, literally what you're talking about? Squash the oh, beef. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is an is an idiom for oh, hey, let's squash the beef, let's bury the hatchet, let's okay, um, kind of not really forgive each other, but just put it aside and just be like, this is a bad thing that happened, yeah. and uh, we're gonna look past it now, get past it, you know. And um, I think there could be some sort of ceremony. We were discussing like a ceremony that you could have. Almost like a, a wedding between these two people, like some sort of social thing where you come together as a community, you have a party, and during this party, you just you squash the beef. You get over it and you go past it. A forgiveness ceremony. I'm down for creating new ceremonies. Right. That's what this culture needs. We there can do go. this. I love it. <laughs> More ceremonies coming up. Why did you move to the Shire? All right, let's pack another one. We got a longer break this time. There's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved yeah. to the Shire hmm? because I saw videos of people yeah. challenging yeah. authority yeah. and thought that I could. So that's coming up after this? Who got it? I guess. I we can talk it. about it. I knew there was no it's drama. Thing. I've always yeah. wanted yeah. to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were <laughs> actually beef. working towards doing the same thing. Squash and beef. Uh, thanks for coming out. Eric. Awesome, loving. Yeah, and thanks for coming out. We did. It's my issue. pleasure. I actually have a lot it's, of... It's an honor to have you on. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part yeah. of that. Visit ShireSociety.com um, to read and sign oh, the yeah, Shire thanks. Society Declaration. Yeah, I wrote it. I, I, I've jotted down a lot of notes about this beef squashing party. To the Shire. Um, Plus, so we're gonna, are we going to talk about the ins and outs of the beef squashing? Oh, we, I think we can skip that, pass that for now. But Because I think there's still a lot, there's still a lot I got to go into, like myself, you know, like incentivizing everyone to do the party. Gold, silver, and other precious metals. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, pizza, beer, ice cream. Oh, I was thinking beef and squash would be more appropriate, but no. <laughs> um, I think it could be a thing, though. Like, you know, you say, hey, you want to squash the beef? Let's have a party together. And then... Uh, you could have like a little ceremony too, where someone's like the officiator of your beef being squashed. <laughs> you could have all sorts of fun. You could have no. Oh, you know what you should do? You should um, you should uh, do this. What is it? Soapbox Idol or something like that at Pork Fest? Talk about it. Talk about my beef squashing idea. Yeah. I, it's really. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like I need more time to kind of hash it out in my mind. Well, yeah, there's a, there's a, um, have you ever heard of, I forget what they're called, but it's like a, um, sure, it's, it's like a reverse wedding where, um, everyone in the community, uh, is, looks at two people and they're like, see, that would be great for Porkfest, of course. Um, it's, uh, so a wedding where everyone in the community looks at this couple that's been together forever but hasn't gotten married and they're like, we're considering you married. 
So you could actually have that with the beef squash, where it's two people who've been feuding for years and years. Everyone in the community can come together and have that party and be like, we're considering your beef squashed for you. And we're not going to listen to you two when you talk about this because it's it's done, it's over, we're tired of hearing about it. So it could end like, you know, long feuds, just kind of turning a blind eye to this drama. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? I mean, that could be a form of it. I'm not sure if that's like the entire thing. It might be more, it would be more effective if one of the people threw the beef squash party in the, involved in the drama. In the lead up to last November's election, there was a little interest in a politically volatile vote. And now that the war has been going on, uh -huh. Long, most of the Republican uh -huh. leadership, which supports uh -huh. the war at any rate, seems to see problem. no need to put anything yeah. on paper. Yeah. Like, 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 for over 35 years, Robert and Roberts has been trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently remove the minimal purchase order for all orders paid in the digital yeah. currency. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and hmm. forward thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports President Obama announced federal standards to improve trust between police and communities and a ban on some types of military equipment for local police agencies. Obama spoke on the measures one day in Camden, New Jersey, mm -hmm. a city that has struggled with one of the country's highest violent crime rates. A blueprint for improved community policing was announced right. that will help cities and towns develop yeah, man. policing strategies that work best for building trust between law enforcement and the communities they serve while enhancing public safety. So they like the beef squash Obama idea. To work Camden has yeah, done to to trust Facebook between the city's with, residents uh, and its police force and a subsequent drop in violent show. crime, nice. murder, and, and open air drug markets. The White House will attempt to create improved of methods of using data and technologies <laughs> and ways to build nice. Excellent. trust and reduce unnecessary yeah, use of force. The Department of Justice recently that. announced yeah. a new program that will help law enforcement agencies implement the use of body worn yeah. cameras on officers, which will be further supported by the White House. Tools cities can utilize will be presented. <laughs> as part of the task force on should we come up back with program that can be used to build oh, should we talk about the drama threads yeah yeah okay. the communities they have sworn to serve and protect meanwhile the white house announced a list of items that are banned from being acquired by local police under select federal programs the list includes and tracked armored vehicles and weaponized and aircrafts and vehicles bayonets grenade launchers and large caliber firearms during his speech in camp so obama said we've seen how militarized leaders <laughs> sometimes give people a feeling like they're an occupying force as opposed to part of a community they're there to protect. Some equipment made for the battlefield is not appropriate for local police departments. Under more rigorous control, law enforcement agencies will still be able to acquire armored vehicles, tactical vehicles, riot gear, and specialized firearms and ammunition. In Survivor Max by Dobby Parker. <laughs> We are, we, oh, at man. some point, we gotta talk about th that drama. <laughs> I wanna open up with Let's that. Let's open up with that one. Uh, <laughs> we'll, open up, we'll, we'll open up. With I just it. scrolled past it on my Facebook feed. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dick Gate happened. Dick Gate. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen Dick Gate? Oh, babe. It's so dumb. You should put that in the Elephant chat. <laughs> the link to it. <laughs> Just title it Dick Gate. What was that? Oh, you you have to, babe. You wait, don't you don't don't tell her. You have to wait for the show. Wait till the show. You you'll find out on the show, babe. <laughs> this is bigger than Boobgate 2015. Whoa. <laughs> Human error or other possible Pun intended. Speed so rapidly. <laughs> this lawsuit appears to be the first no, filed by a non-employee of Amtrak. Last week, an Amtrak employee who was riding the train as a passenger filed the first. <laughs> we don't say who it is. Don't say who it is. This has been <laughs> Radio News online at <laughs> 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 <laugh
He did not. No, 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 no. He put a good cause this week with the Save Our Children campaign. Celebs like Jessica Simpson, Brad Pitt, and Gwyneth Paltrow headlined a charity event to help their suffering kids who desperately need a chance to live a normal life. Angelina Jolie talked to Starfix about the charity, saying, quote, you don't have to be a mother to want to help my children, many of whom are not getting a proper education. If you look at the numbers, one in five of my children will struggle with drug problems. Joining us now is a representative a from the charity, Julie Harrison. Julie, it was such naked. a great call. Absolutely. So we're talking oh, about I children who don't have any positive role models. They're born into a life we didn't ask do for. Right. The state's not going to no step way. up and help these kids. It's time someone did something. Here's a quote from Victoria Beckham, and I found this powerful. <laughs> it breaks my heart to no think way. about these kids living somewhere no in my house like with no hope for a happy future. Oh, yeah, that one time you did that weird pose. Yeah, you did do that. staggering number of Star's children are being excluded growing up without parents. Right. This is the Onion News Network. <laughs> Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. And if you are listening on uh, all of our current uh, stations that we're on, LRN, LMR, IPM, uh, check out rebelofshow.com. Go to live. And you could have seen uh, us dancing to our bumper, which is kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the big drama, the big huge drama this week. I don't know if you saw it. No, you saw Shire. You saw it. I, I was in it. You I were was, in it. Yeah. I was part of it. You're, yeah, you're, you're, the, you're the photographer. <laughs> <laughs> right, the extortionist. The extortionist of, uh, of uh, Dick Gate. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. This is, <laughs> this is something else. I'm jumping ahead, of course. All right, yeah. If you want to jump ahead of that, I'm no. just making fun of Dick Gate. Yeah, we can still talk about Dick Gate for a second. It's really interesting. It, in an interesting response, seemingly, to the Josie uh, picture that's been going game. around Facebook. Yeah. Uh, Graham Colson has posted his penis publicly. <laughs> totally publicly on, online. And uh, it's going around Facebook. It's popping up on, wall, on my wall every now and then. There's going to be memes of that now. <laughs> That's going to be like the, already. the Chris Cantwell picture where he's got just the mask over his, uh, his hoo-ha. He's never going to escape that picture. It's always going to... Uh, it's always going to pop up in threads. Up. Yeah. When did he do this? Um, what, yesterday? Like, Two days I, ago? It might just be yesterday. Yeah, yeah, I think it was yesterday. Yeah, he posted on Facebook. You know, I'm really <laughs> mad at him. He keeps coming <laughs> yeah, around my I house know, and I heard. out in the street. I heard. Right. What's yeah. going on with that? What's up with that? I'd like to know. Yeah. Uh, two nights in a row... When I'm out ready to do a broadcast, the I hear someone out screaming in the street, and I walk outside, and it's Graham both times. And I'm like, be quiet. We have neighbors. Yeah. You can't be screaming in the street. Go away. <sighs> yeah, he needs to stop that drama. He needs to figure that out. But anyways, Shire Dude, you had some drama with... Uh, with the with yeah, the release we. the season for yeah I know she brought me she brought me back into that <laughs> you know I, I wasn't yeah. even involved I think with you stealing her footage but yet somehow <laughs> I get dragged into that drama thread I'm like I didn't even release this footage woman like stop bringing me into this <laughs> well yeah so uh, earlier in the show I was talking about all the poly footage that I had. I, I guess I could tell this entire story. Um, you don't have to. I mean, I understand. I'm just saying it's, it's, it's fascinating that there's, whenever something is released or done that we do, there's drama that immediately follows the next morning. Well, that's, that's a really interesting point to make because the last time there was that big drama thread about us, it was right after the very successful Rebel Love Show party that happened after Liberty Forum. There was drama about like the planning of that party. Oh, yeah. yeah, you guys were the center of uh, all of the drama there. Yeah, oh, the Ice Luge incident. Man, yeah, Fuck how that. could people hate on you after you throw a bomb ass party? <laughs> I mean, like right after it, it was, was like morning, it was like was seven a.m. in the morning. morning. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. was just waking up or whatever, and I see all this bullshit on the internet about oh, some ice luge, whatever. I was like, what the hell? Who even I know, cares? Against popular belief, neither one of us moved to the Shire to screw someone out of a two hundred dollar block of ice. <laughs> yeah, if you did, like, that well, wasn't my goal to move here to do that. I'm Why not, would I do that? I don't know. It yeah. seemed like a bullshit claim, but if you did, what would even be the remedy? What, what would I will. Be here's it the wouldn't thing. be going like straight to Facebook. That's not gonna. Yeah, solve we had the no communication uh, from Kurt at all during that. Yeah, like right at he didn't talk about his grievances or anything like that. And uh, he was actually supposed to pay us ten percent of the cut that he made that night with the food. He didn't do that. In all honesty, if he didn't make any money, he ordered that luge without our permission, without our like saying like, "Yeah, we want to order that." He just did it. 
we talked about it, but I never said I wanted it. Yeah, you assumed we were going to pay for it. Yeah. So, and he lowered a price. Like, on does he work for an ice luge? Company? I don't know. He knows a guy or something. I have no idea. I don't why, know. Why? Why was I he so invested in this thing? He was why really trying to push it on us when he first when we first approached yeah. him so to he, cater the party. So he must have thought he was going to make some money off yeah. of this ice luge. And then, so and, then they, and then they and then he like pointed how like we were advertising it. And honestly, I was advertising it so that people came and used it to try and make him money on that. Uh, you didn't yeah, you care know, because we I was trying to, to, yeah, I was trying to pivot out for him, so he made his money back on. Oh, it. that's yeah. nice of you. Because we told him any money he made off of that that he wouldn't, get, we wouldn't take a cut from it. He would it'd be all his, just to recoup yeah. the price of it. Right after we had found the snafu that he had ordered something that we didn't want. Yeah, and wasn't even to specs anyway. of what we wanted. But at any rate, but this is we've my, already talked about this. Before. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But to, just to say, if there's a remedy, I would have, I would have negotiated like just keep the ten percent on this, you know, bear to hatch and go on. Right, which is I would have offered yeah. that to him. Yeah, the money that he ended up just taking anyway. <laughs> but, uh, but anyways, the new uh, thing that happened with you—the you newest drama that. is um, I was doing. I was working on a collaborative, uh, a collaboration video with uh, uh, the artist from you known as O Girl, Lauren Rumpler, right? Uh, we were working on a poly video that was like supposed to be educational. It was it was her idea. She'd been wanting to do this for a really long time, and so she she was like, uh, I, I agreed to come over and film it, and then to edit afterwards. Um, trying to sum up here. This is a lot of stuff that happened. We ended up filming on a green screen that she really wanted to use, which I told her, hey, you want to try out the green screen first with like some practice footage before the actual day of filming. You want to make sure it looks good in the editing. Otherwise, it's going to take forever to edit if I have to like fiddle with the green screen the entire time. Uh, that's what ended up happening because she, she didn't take my advice. And then it took a lot longer than expected to edit this video for her. Uh, right now there was no money that changed hands this was a collaboration i you know i just i wanted to do this as much as she did and get some cool credit and youtube views and whatnot you know the last time we did a collaboration was her dollar burning video which which got 30 times the amount of views that she usually gets a who's this this is a uh, lauren rumpler and okay. the summer objectivist yeah. girl yeah okay yeah yeah you know, the artist formerly known yeah <laughs> she's not that anymore um so yeah big long story and then uh as my, uh, it happens as artists. As it's taking, you choose to collaborate yeah, with somebody yeah. who sucks sometimes, and then you follow through with the effort and whatever. And I, I was shit, trying to some... finish this video for her, yeah. and after a really long time of editing it, she's like, "You know what? Uh, just send me the footage. I'll, I'll edit it, and I'll give you credit." Oh no! And I was like, "That's not gonna happen." No, um, yeah. you can't trust her for that. Either I'm gonna edit this footage, or you're gonna pay me to have filmed this for you. Right. Oh. Um, like, look, you're you're gonna let me do the do the work that I said I was gonna do. Yeah, that's your part. If you want to all of a sudden edit this and make this your video, then you've got to pay me for coming in and, and filming it. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. I don't think was unfair. She called that extortion. <laughs> <laughs> extortion. <laughs> Stuff that I filmed with my own two hands, with my oh. own camera, with my own, and I had it on my own computer. Somehow that's extortion. I'm extorting no. her. Um, no, she would have to have owned the footage, right, for that to be extortion. And then yeah. she, she started saying that I stole her footage. Also not true, because she didn't own the footage. She still doesn't own the footage. So why... Uh, uh, okay, so I see. You so, don't want her to have it because it's like, oh, this is going to look like it's hers when it's mine. Well, yeah, if, if I may chime in. It was you, a collaboration. A, Ian, if any, any footage that gets ever released, we don't believe in IP. You could have taken that anyways. Yeah. All right? You could take anything she puts out and use it as a parody for a comedy show. That's your, right. It's up there. Well, like You can reuse it. You, yeah, you don't the, believe in IP. The, Second off, she knows who you are. Like everything, every time she's on camera, she's featured in multiple Shire Dude episodes. Why in the world would anyone in that in that uh, episode expect to not, expect show, up not, not to show up episode. in a Shire Dude episode? So yeah, the story is I did end up oh. using that footage because because she fired me as being on the project. She, uh, I gave her an offer. I was like, look, if you want the footage, I can send it to you. It'll be uh, two hundred and ten dollars for the day of filming. I said that specifically. And then she said, no, I'm actually going to go pay this other activist filmmaker to do it. And I'm going to pay him more to reshoot the whole thing. So you're off. You're, you're done. Right? And Ouch. then, I'm, so I'm sitting here with all this footage that I'd, that I'd spend an entire day filming. And I'm like, you know what? Some of this can be pretty funny in a Shire Dude episode. Like I do with all my other footage. So yeah. um, a lot of it ended up in, in the finale. And I think it actually turned out really well. It turned out amazing. Like the... the <laughs> The way every, you kept uh, bringing like multiple layers of them all dancing together, it was yeah, magical. all the green screen like footage. A yeah. lot of that was like miscellaneous footage that actually wasn't even supposed to end up in the 
final poly project, that other project that didn't, uh-huh. that didn't get done, that actually still can get done. Hey, if you guys want to donate $210 to me, I'll, uh, I'll Why post. Why $210? That's, uh, I, that's my calculated fee for a day's worth of Will filming. Will you take it in Doge? Whoa. Absolutely. That is a lot. How many hours is that? Uh, we filmed straight for like seven hours. Like six or seven hours. I mean, that is, you know, that's a decent rate. But wow. for a videographer, that's, that's what, pretty standard. What equipment were you using? I uh, was using my HD webcam. Um, and then Bo actually was... So, I mean, I don't know if I... If I get to 210, I'd probably split it with Bo because he actually was filming as well. Okay. Yeah. And, and what, what I haven't talked to him using? about that yet. I don't was know if he wants to get paid. 4D? He was using the, the lighting, all the lighting and uh, other, some other fancy stuff like a diffuser and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Mark B squashing coming back at uh, on the Rebel Love Show. If there was a place, hey, the chat room says turn me up. Turn you up. Rolling back government. Okay. Freedom lovers had secured a twenty percent voting block an hour for the day. day. For the day. Oh, let's pack the bong again. Yeah. Can I? Oh yeah, that sounds yeah, right. Bong, check, 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 check. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds better. Uh-huh. Less, but yeah. Uh, I don't know where it is. Here it is. Babe, it's not a mic. And that's audio. Uh huh. Thank you so much. Right. I am good on that. I have. I'll get you. Oh yeah, you're off the uh, class. <laughs> yeah, I need water. I, I, I need a few. Oh yeah. So I'm looking to to do audio. Wow. So if you know anybody that is willing to do this, during court fest. I'd be power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty that's around it, thinking about it and talking about it but here in New Hampshire people are doing it 100 so they said my camera focus sucks a documentary about the <laughs> is there something we can do or is it's it just this not auto camera focus? yeah the, the camera focus that sucks is just because it's far away from Derek no they um, said Derek J your camera focus sucks yeah it's this one let your friends know you're okay. That's just because it's far away from you and it's zoomed in on you. That's why it looks like the focus is bad. Oh, I see. Yeah, crazy. Well, this, one, this one's pretty good, but it's kind of low. I wish we had some sort of... We're going to figure it out. We'll have better By the next so, uh, show, our, our lighting equipment will come in. So we're going to change all the camera angles, too. Yeah, we got... Because right now we're limited with some of the... Of the uh, cameras with uh, the length of the USB cords. So I ordered a bunch of USB extension cables. Yeah. And the reason why I wouldn't be able to get it off is because anyone can publish on the <laughs> I want a mute button. You want a mute button? Publishing materials. <clears throat> yeah. I'm coughing. I know. Yeah. yeah. I'm clearing your throat. <sighs> that's, that's, that'll, that'll come at some point, maybe. Yeah. How, I don't know how I would even hook that up, to be honest. It's uh, just in the mixer. Put in the mixer. Yeah. 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 We should have those cough buttons. Ages. So make it easy for readers. Especially if we're going to be smoking someone yeah, hot on air. Yeah. Smoke a lot on air. Yeah. <laughs> There's a couple of times I had. Oh, I muted you that one time. I, I was on the. I was on. The, I was on the ball with that man. I muted yeah, you when I heard that. Yeah, I muted it. Yeah, I was like, I, that was very pro of me. Yeah. And then right after he's done, you're like headlines and paragraphs and sentences. Same goes for your keywords. What someone would like. You gotta give me credit. I was on the ball with that, so I got that. Or Google for more. Yeah, she was. But that's so much online or in a job interview. You have no idea how simpler it was. Speech.com. Right. I'm Holland. Did you know you can get news updates about the Liberty Radio Network delivered in the way you prefer? <laughs> They're looking at us like, why are we laughing? <laughs> <laughs> the studio audience has no idea why we're laughing. They can't hear the Ian Freeman drops that I've been playing. Yeah, it's not the show. Why not? They can't hear that? They can't hear it. Where's these, these people? Oh, the live I actually audience. don't know if the this studio can hear the drops. I don't know. Yeah, the, they can. Playing on this computer because the audio... Facebook they might be able to. Yeah, why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't the output going to um, LMR be the same one that's going into our headphones? I'm not. Hey, the, what, the what, audio what, guy. what time do we come back? We have thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Okay. Derek's on it. See, I know. We don't need a, we don't need show, a show clock. clock. We got Derek. <laughs> Derek sitting in the studio. <laughs> 
every show. <laughs> Ooh, Derek J. Show Clocks coming soon. Either way, you'll create a tradition everyone will love. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash your family today. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. And uh, a lot of times during the show, we talk about uh, the scene, the social scene here in Manch. And uh, it's been uh, some crazy events going on as of late. You know, uh, on Sunday, this past Sunday, you hosted an amazing pub crawl. Thank you. You know, I got a lot of love for that. Uh, we did a pub crawl. We went to four different bars, really amazing spots, too. Um, there's a new one in town where it's pour your own beer. It's like it, I missed it because of work. It's so high tech. I want to hit that. It's cool. You put your card in the wall near the taps, and the taps activate, and it keeps track of your tab for you on the screen, and it tells oh. you, oh, it's so Oh, my cool. God. There's a guy who yeah. created something called the Bit Switch, uh -huh. and it works exactly like that for any vending machine. It is simply a switch that goes on or off Yeah. Uh, based on... So it will generate a Bitcoin address, tell you to send it a micropayment or whatever the price of the thing you're about to get is, and then it works. It turns on, right? Just like a credit card swipe, but it's operated by Bitcoin. Cool. That's amazing. Oh, yeah, wow. that, so they could, maybe this, there could be an application of the bit switch at this pub. Why wouldn't they be able to just simply add it as an option? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know, I know Matt Whitlock has been working on something too. I don't know if he, he's talked about it publicly yet, but he's working on uh, making an 80s vending machine a Bitcoin accepting machine. And he's already, he's already done that. He's already plugged in Bitcoin, but now he's got to plug in Bitcoin and dollars, which will make it a little more complicated. I don't know if he's finished doing that yet. And he, Why doesn't he just use a bit switch? Maybe he doesn't know this thing. Maybe. Is. Yeah, maybe he doesn't. Well, people are working on the same thing at the same time. Right. That's, that's you know. true. I mean, there's already, there's already Bitcoin uh, accepting arcade games that I've heard of in the past. So. Yeah. Well, another thing cool, there's multiple Bitcoin locations in Manchester, too. Right. Another stop on the pub crawl was the new chocolate place that accepts Bitcoin. Of course, Murphy's Tap Room accepts it. Good. Um, Rob was going to get his haircut today uh, for Bitcoin. I know, at uh, Barber's Tool Shed, I skipped that. And that was a huge mistake. I, <laughs> I, that place is busy for a reason, and I am never going to not go somewhere else. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, that pub crawl was great. Um, and then there's so much stuff coming up this week. This week is just intense. Right. You know, I mean, especially for us, like busy schedules. Like, I was on a show yesterday, Currency of Anarchy. I do this tonight. Uh, tomorrow, we're going we're gonna to be on the School Sucks Project. Shout out to Brett. Uh, I think Carlos is going to be on there as well, right? Yeah, it's be all four of us. That's yeah. awesome. In this new studio. Which yeah, we're going to break. We're going to pop the cherry at the School Sucks Project. We're going to christen it. Yeah, we're going to christen it. I think <laughs> he's already used it for like an episode or two now. Yeah. That. But like yeah, we're gonna, we'll christen it with some rebel love. Um, but uh, And then Thursday, Manch Karaoke Night. Right? Is that this Thursday? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Manch Karaoke Night. Are you going to come out? Uh, oh, no, you do no, show. I, I do Flaming that's Freedom, right. but I'm going to be on vacation this week. Oh, I'm going, right. to going to Philadelphia right Philly. after this show. That's oh, right. right. Yeah, you said that earlier. Yeah. Well, at any rate, Manch Vegas has, uh, we got the karaoke going on. And then, you're, oh, you're going to miss the checkpoint. Friday. What? That's there's a check yeah, there's uh, a checkpoint. I miss all the cool true. things. Can't, this, is, well, this is why you can't leave the Shire. I know. <laughs> I, I am so already <laughs> like, oh man, I got to come back for that. Uh, but I can't. That's okay. We'll, 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 we'll cop lock for you. We'll, we'll make sure right. uh, we'll do some cop locking. So, um, for I'll be live streaming that. So you can, you can watch from Philly if you get bored. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shire dude. Yeah. Probably, well, Shire dude .com, you're going to be live streaming the entire uh, cop lock DUI checkpoint. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can go this to Shire first one the, and This is the first one of the season. I, I tend to, I live stream all the checkpoints I can in Manchester. I did, I did maybe like four of them last year and they're all on my Bambeezer account, which is just at ShireDude.com. Yeah. The last one uh, got canceled because uh, fair weather activists known as the police don't like to get cold. Oh, yeah. The cops didn't want to get cold. It's too cold. It was like 40 something. It was fine. Or maybe they got, they uh, heard word that there's a documentary crew in town. Yeah. I think that was more of the, uh, a documentary crew and like a Facebook event page called Suspicionless Check wow. Checkpoint Party and yeah. 
we were all ready to go out there. Tons That's definitely a factor. You think they don't follow this? Oh, I bet oh I'm you. sure they do. They has to be I mean, of course. There's yeah. a public event page. I bet you they saw it and they're like, oh, nope, don't want to do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What happens now, like in Manchester, like, obviously there's, you know, police are following what goes on in regards to like cop block stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, especially with DUI checkpoints. They know we're going to be out, out there every time. So they already assume it, but they have to have people that are actually reading these Facebook pages. You know, I would imagine that they do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at what point do they just not do the checkpoints? When do we stop them? Like, does that ever happen? Well, they, they do the checkpoints because they get federal funding. So, I mean... Yeah, I guess they, they, they sort of have to. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, they can just cancel the funding. Didn't the police chief or just quit or something? I, mean, I, I don't know who... Someone in the police force ended up quitting. Someone higher up. I believe up. it was the, the police commissioner. Commissioner? Yeah. Okay. Dana, somebody. Yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe the, well, maybe the next person is going to be like, yeah, these checkpoints, uh, like five people are going through them every week because they're being blocked off by activists. Maybe we should just stop. Maybe it's a waste of our time. You um, know, as David m- Mara. As much as, I, as much as I love doing like the cop block and like getting... Um, uh, you know, cars not to go through a checkpoint and cop, you know, filming the cops and stopping them from, you know, doing any harm to people. Um, one thing that I actually really love doing cop blocking and uh, during a DUI checkpoint is going around hitting the bars and telling, you know, patrons and the, the um, bartenders and whatnot, don't tell everyone not to go all over on Bridge Street or wherever the checkpoint may be. What's that like? I have a hard time because like uh, doing weird stuff like that sort of takes a lot of bravery. So tell me, like, let's have a conversation well, like it is in the bar because I have no idea well, how this well, happens. Well, first off, all right, if you want to, I took video of this one time. Oh, where, I can just see yeah, how it If happens. you go to YouTube.com, and I have a raw channel, v Rebel Raw, uh, I have multiple different playlists. Do you normally record your interactions with these people? Is it like activism that you do I walk the video basi- with? No, basically, uh, um, at the time, it was uh, me, Shire Dude, Joel, and uh, my Rebel Mistress over there. And that was, that was, I took her out on a date on a D- at, to a DUI checkpoint. How did you like the date? Was it great, babe? Still here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> still here, people. Yeah, if you want, if you want a, uh, if you want a, an idea for a hot date, take your partner <laughs> to go cop blocking a DUI checkpoint. They I think that's it. a niche. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if every, any, every girl's going to be into that. I know, maybe not. Um, but anyways, uh, we I walked around uh, recording the interaction where we actually had Anne. Uh, holding a sign that just said checkpoint on bridge. Now, mind you, here in Manchester, uh, so many people know about cop lot because of the of the checkpoints that happen. So nice. there's always they always you know, say people, hi cop lot. Yeah, hi cop. Yeah, they know what cop lot is. Like in the building we're in. Both our neighbor and our neighbor below us know what cop lock is and have cop lock stickers on like their windows and stuff like that. And I don't even know we don't even they're not even associated with cop lock whatsoever. Yeah, one of the you know, things I like, like about Cop Block is that it's decentralized. So no matter where you are, you can start a Cop Block chapter, start blocking the cops oh, yeah. <laughs> at their checkpoints. And as um, far as Liberty Branding goes, it's like the largest one there is. Oh, it's, it's the most it's, widely. It's it's, it's a, far beyond the Liberty Movement for sure. Yeah, like it's it's becoming a. A cultural Way, thing for people to record to police. Oh, totally. Yeah, there's p- people of all different walks of life uh, in the cop block communities. So I'm so glad because I think it is the most peaceful solution. They say the camera is the new gun, and so, oh, so many people is. still do talking about like, oh, well, I don't like the state. Well, what's the because they use vi- init- they use violence against people. Yeah. Well, like. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna use violence. It's like no, we need another way. I can't believe we're at a point now where I still have to convince people to hit the record button on their phone if they get pulled over. Like that should <laughs> if be I like, see given, a cop, if I see a cop coming up to me in any shape or form, I immediately take it out and I hit, I start hitting record. You That's know? the right thing to do yeah. in this age. Always record the cops, people. You never know what they're, uh, they may do. There's more social stuff coming up on the Rebel Love Show. The Rebel Love Show is some of the most compelling content I've heard to this day. They make me think. They really make me question the values that I have been taught as I have grown up in this mean, mistreating world. Plus, I really love the cooking segments. If you want to know what life is I like love this in the Manchester, New Hampshire activist scene, The Rebel Love Show is the premier choice. The Rebel Love Show is the Dogecoin of Liberty yeah, Podcast. The Rebel Love wait, wait. Show is a good show, and it's liked by all the young people who like sex with strangers and have lots of body hair. 
I don't usually listen to Liberty Podcasts, but when I do, I tune into The Rebel Loaf Show. The smooth, baritone voice of Rob Mathias just does it for me. And I find that shower dude, oh, so charming. <laughs> <laughs> when I keep a finger on the pulse of the free state, hey, Renee's here. I'm not actually moving to New Hampshire or spending 16 hours a day in Facebook groups, check out The Rebel Love Show at rebelloveshow.com. That's rebelloveshow.com. So oh, I'm sorry. I, I pause you because, like, we rarely ever hear our commercial play during the commercial breaks. I've only heard it once before. And now Derek's commercial is up. People can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments, <laughs> up to and including. Someone's like someone's doing this on purpose. Turn it up. Oh, all right, all right, all right. It's up. The best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Thank you again, Renee, for the The touch-up. people who call themselves the government wait... How how was it? ...peaceful people in jail for crimes... You look exhausted. If Starbucks used some of its money to... Yeah, you can. (laughs) (laughs) So why would I support the American... Struggle's real, huh? The Empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Yes. In this free ebook, may say <laughs> rats. Is your All right, we're going to smoke again. Where's, where's the lighter at? Agents over over the narcs. Uh, it keeps disappearing. Sorry. No, I, 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 I got oh. <laughs> like, like <laughs> the rats. Rats. Oh, move the Renee. <laughs> hey, move the Renee kick over for her. Download rats free at rats Hey, listeners at home, if you want to create your own Renee cake, all you have to do is fill. <laughs> I won't tell them what kind of cigarettes you use for. That's the secret uh, ingredient. But not the, well, we're talking about Renee cake? Yeah. If you are successful, <laughs> you're a lawyer, a business owner, or you have a great career, you understand the concept of protecting yourself. Well, are you protecting yourself? And your assets with quality life insurance? Consider these possible ways. You need to watch the segment when it goes live. policies of five hundred thousand dollars and above. Man age fifty, non-tobacco user may be able to obtain five hundred thousand dollars of coverage for as little as one. <laughs> Who made this? I don't know. It's fantastic. <laughs> I hope this going out to the live. <laughs> yep. it, it, it was pretty hysterical. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio. How, how much song we got there? Find out at shows.lrn.fm. Uh, That's 53 seconds. LRN. Thank you. <laughs> oh, we're back. <laughs> Welcome back wrong. to the. I've been the show clock and I messed them up. <laughs> Derek, I gotta order yeah. a new one. Yeah, we gotta order a new uh, show clock. Uh, Derek here uh, has dropped the ball. Fifty three seconds ahead of schedule. <laughs> you, 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 I thought, I thought you were, we were I, coming back in, in a minute. I thought you were a pro. I dropped you, let, you, you dropped the ball on us, uh, sir. So, uh, anyways, we're talking about uh, before we went to the whole cop block thing. Um, just social schedule, uh, social stuff going on here in the Shire. Like every night, there's something going on. I mean, we're going one night karaoke, next night uh, cop blocking. You that's know, large. I mean, that's largely my my fault for the karaoke and the pub crawl and the whatnot. True. Yeah. Well, what's crazy is that pub crawl. All right. Not only did we have like what up to like twenty some people at one point during that crawl. Yeah. That definitely. also took place during a Bitcoin meetup in the exact same city at a bar right across the street. Right. So, yeah, all these Liberty people are doing a pub crawl and, and then another big group of them are doing their own meetup. I'm sure the, those weren't the only two things happening. Oh, I'm sure in Manchester. M- yeah. I mean, there's multiple things always happening. Right. So. Yeah. I mean, and just in Manchester, too. Uh, it's it's amazing how, mu- how much social events, uh, how many social events happen. And uh, Spe- yeah. speaking of social um, events, 
uh, if you're in New Hampshire, because uh, um, I am uh, create uh, well created events. Uh, it is for the Foundation for New Hampshire Independence. Uh, there, we're having a brew and sedition event uh, at Abel Ebenezer Microbrewery down in Merrimack. Uh, it's going to be June third at eight p.m. Uh, when the board members will be doing a uh, quick talk on uh, you know why New Hampshire should be free and independent of the Union. And afterwards, it's going to be pretty much a meet and greet with the other board members, with uh, people who are interested in learning more about uh, New Hampshire independence and what that means for uh, our freedoms here in New Hampshire. So uh, it's a great social event to get out to and uh, you know learn a little bit more about uh, New Hampshire independence and support and hopefully find more supporters. Yeah, man. You know, but uh, I mean, that's just like one thing that's always going to happen. Like, uh, um. God, what's what's another big event that's coming up? That I'm, I know I'm drawing a blank on it, hmm. you know. But uh, oh well, there's the poly karaoke that we're going to. Oh, that's right. Did you mention poly- that? No, yeah, we're we're venturing into the poly community. We're in, doing uh, activism, Derek. Uh, we're going out to a polyamory social event. Cool. Yeah. So you're doing picking up the Davi method of like going to a zombie convention and talking about liberty. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you're going to a different. I mean, I'm going there yeah. just to hang yeah. out and do you know meet other people in the poly community that aren't in the liberty community. Because in all honesty, the poly community is a lot bigger than the liberty community in New Hampshire. Yeah, yeah granted, I'm not going to go out there and like preach like Sandra Spooner, but I am going to you know try to make friends and have yeah. some fun and absolutely. Yeah, be, be with our kind. Yeah, and who you know? You know who knows? Maybe they'll come over one day and see we have a crazy radio show and radio show and. You know, we pitch it that we have a poly podcast. A there poly you go. Radio show. There you go. Like, oh yeah, we do a radio show and talk about poly. What do you do? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It so is pretty cool. It is very cool. It's, so it's a niche that I don't mind being in. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, one thing I love about our lives, like we're living like as free as we can, do whatever we want. You know, most people don't do that. Most people are like they're set in their, um, they're literally are just set in their way of like thinking and their programming. And that's it. You know, yeah, and we get to have all these different life experiences because we're just living, we're living for the moment, you know, the life. You know what I'm saying? Does that make any sense? I hear you. You're kind of making sense. Okay, I'm high. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Derek, we have a uh, pork fest is coming up. Oh, right. And we're doing a panel. Correct. Oh, yeah. we yeah. are doing a panel on media. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it was your suggestion. Yeah. It's a really good one. Okay. I can't wait <laughs> I to see know. all the other uh, people. Yeah, um, but uh, it's going to be as of right now. It's ten for Friday. Um, but uh, myself, uh, Derek Shire, dude, and possibly Bo, we're going to be doing a uh, a panel on documenting activism in the Shire and what the you know pro tips would be. Yeah, media panels have been done before. But well, what would you want to see on it? What would I want to see on it? Oh, I mean, you're on it. So what do you what do you want to make this look like? You know, that's um, I'd like to talk about the fact that I'm the only person that I know of who live streams in Manchester. Right. Yeah. No, that's true. That needs to be done like way more often. Like, so what are some tips to be a person who live streams? Because most people like it's sort of a personality jump. You, you know, yeah, like it's a lot for a person who's just be, OK. And now I'm a, somebody who has a live stream channel and whips out their camera to video record it. At random times, I hear you. Yeah, live to the internet with people chatting to them. It's a big step. Hmm. So, like, what I I download Bamboozer. That's yeah. step one. And that's the easiest platform I think, and it connects to Facebook. That's what I use as well. Yeah, and you can you can set it to Facebook to where like if you have a Facebook page or I think just your Facebook profile, you can do where the second you start live streaming, it posts a link to that live stream, and so you can get your friends on board at least right away, and maybe they'll share the link with other people. Um, that's that's pretty important is getting people to actually share your link and so people are actually watching it live. Um, I'd say the other important thing to do is just show up to important events, show up to you know to the scene, what's happening. What's uh, something to live stream? How, how does someone know? What's the signal that says get your phone out and start live streaming to the to the world? Whenever activism is happening, certainly. Like uh, the, the checkpoints. I'll always live stream the checkpoints because there's a lot of people out in public you know, doing something. And frankly, if you don't video record it, it didn't happen. Um, <coughs> if you're going out and doing activism, holding a sign somewhere, and you don't record it, you might as well be facing the wall holding that sign. In my opinion, I mean, oh yeah, yeah, this, you're, you're preserving one forever. Thing I, you, one thing, one thing, one thing I want to see you live stream. Yeah, is uh, when we have fun during the election season. I mean, I feel like we talked about this before. Where sometimes I kind of feel like it's a responsibility to go troll politicians, right? Like you know? Ian and Rich just did. 
to yeah, exactly Maggie like how they did Maggie. Yeah, about how like she throws people in cages over uh, uh, marijuana, but uh, she will in New Hampshire. People somehow the state has a monopoly on liquor. The only place that can sell liquor in New Hampshire is the government. They own those stores. That's it. So literally in New Hampshire, the Democrat governor is uh, in charge of the police force, which kidnaps people for drugs, specifically marijuana, and throws them in cages called jails. And she's the one doing it. But then she's selling liquor right off the bat. It's a right. huge, huge difference. You know, like she's literally protecting her own business Ian by Freeman throwing people in jail. Went to the state house to testify about some legislation regarding a uh, the ability to sell alcohol in New Hampshire uh, with images of minors on them. There was a controversial beer label that had a baby on it, <laughs> and New Hampshire was trying to disallow this. And people were arguing in favor or against it to the legislators, and Ian argued in abolition of the Liquor de Commission. <laughs> <laughs> Just used it as an opportunity to be like, yeah, you should shut down this entire organization because <laughs> you shouldn't exist. It's, yeah, they shouldn't be involved in it. They shouldn't be running it. None of that should exist. Well, what it did was it had the effect of convincing these legislatures like, that's not a good idea. We're necessary. But maybe we can really back off on this labeling not <laughs> issue, you know? Yeah. So like, I've seen politics work here in New Hampshire, which is pretty weird. Um, it is weird. Because, I, it, it, because of that. Exactly. Like, you have so much easy access in the state house. There's actual porcupines in office in the state house. We're at 15, 20. I, I, I've lost count. So like, I'm, I'm from Philadelphia, a city of 1.5 million. New Hampshire has 1.3 million people. So, like, all in all the state. So, a few people going up to the state house makes such a bigger impact yeah and uh there are more representatives so-called yeah in the exactly. state house um i think uh it's like in the top three in the english-speaking world or something i mean we, there are a lot of representatives yeah. per person i think it's what, what like one for every two thousand people or something i don't know what the numbers break down to. oh it's it <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know if that actually hits goes out or not i don't think so the yeah. chat, chat room says they can't hear ian Okay. Oh wow! Yeah, so we're just bursting into laughter for no reason. <laughs> that's great. That's fine. That that's all works. Um. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna say all right. that now. It's all nice. right. I'm sorry, listeners. <laughs> I'll stop. Yeah, just say that for the break. <laughs> uh, they, but the the chat is arguing with us too. That uh, they say bullshit. Politics never works. It's a scam. Wow. I'd love to respond to that when we come back. And I'm sure we may forget about that when we come back. Yeah, you might have to remind us. <laughs> the last two hours. It's only really Free Press Publications is an independent alternative radio publishing company founded in What would you like to talk about in the last segment, Derek? It's the last segment. I know. Oh, my God. What? Um, peace, freedom, love, and liberty. My high school outreach. Oh, yeah. Freedom-oriented material. You know, by the way, I think it's, it's like if you do have Anne Shire dude on and whatnot, like it's kind of crazy. Like the Rebel Love Studio is becoming like the new LRN studio. Or think about it, how many shows come out of this now. Like if if they're doing Flaming Freedom, they're going to both be doing it from in here, you know. Not to mention like Seditious Sirens is on LRN. We're on LRN. Three different sh three nights a week is going to be something coming out of this studio. This is LRN Studio B. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Like it's like it's more than an honor that multiple shows would be done. Out. And then that mentioned Shire Dude stuff is out of here anyway. So that's four shows. Studio. Yeah, you are. Oh, man. Yeah. Like, we're making it the cultural thing here. I think people get mad if we cut to Graham's penis on the, the cam feed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't, 
Just throw the link in the chat. <laughs> I'm not in the chat. Censor it somehow. Oh, put a, a window bot like a, a put the Rebel Love logo over it. <laughs> <laughs> or a Shire Dude logo, yeah. They're both. I need a show clock. I'll just tell you. But well, yeah. you were wrong last time. I was doing the math wrong. I, well, however you explain why you were wrong doesn't negate the fact that you were still wrong. Okay. I'll, I'll count on you. It's the last segment. I mean, we can't fuck two segments up in a row. Exactly two minutes. Okay. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, oh, there's a lot. Uh, a lot of where I am now. <laughs> are you going to be able to get this done in time? Issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an Indle Flyer. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I am is because <laughs> you know, the reason for you guys being on this way to you are, I never would have found. Shire Dude is just making a great Shire Dude advertisement with, with Graham Colson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is this going around or you want this to stay? Or? No, you can hand it around. On free talk live. Okay. Yeah, sure. If you can't listen you know, to the passing this around. You can listen to LRN.FM from any phone, anywhere. Add this number to your phone. 213-493-0309. It's a long distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling. Call 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. What do you do here again? Stateless free market. You've been here all day? Hey, did you hear about uh, Cody and Melinda? No. They broke up. Oh, I did hear that. Um, well, actually, I heard she wasn't on the show anymore, but I didn't know they broke up. That's he, really... he talked about him in his last episode, oh, that's, so I feel okay sad, talking about it on LRN because he talked about That's why he's LRN. doing repeats uh, for the second hour of his live show. Oh, we got... If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. And uh, earlier this week... Uh, Derek over here, you uh, you were yesterday. Uh, suppose yeah, yesterday. Suppose you guys said you're inspired by something we did. So you guys, uh, well, which we I didn't say that. Ian, Ian said did that. Said, I'm sorry, Ian said that. But uh, which was just simply well, we did it, especially with Shardy really organized it. But we did because we were inspired by what you guys did before we even moved here. And what was that that you guys did yesterday or two days ago? Uh, I handed out some philosophy of liberty flyers in or outside of a high school. All right, and why were you doing that? I want to share the ideas of liberty with uh, young people. And there are a bunch of young people who, for three minutes, walk in a very concentrated stampede to buses. And so this is a great opportunity to hand out literature. And why would you go to a school to do that? Uh, that's where the young people are. And why, and why do you want to wake up the young people? Uh, it's it makes they have a longer opportunity to do something. Uh, they're at the beginning stages of their life where they're making choices um, that will affect uh, the trajectory of their lives. And so I want to give the gift of information that I didn't have. Basically, is uh, I wish I had this information when I was their age. Um, and I. Well, you I know, mean, I for me, that. like for me, I kind of view it where uh, you know, I view this. You know, we we no, none of us here want the state to exist, and they should never be involved in education. The state doesn't it, exist. It, <laughs> I know it's just people that go to buildings that say that the state exists. It's yeah, yeah. I get that. Yeah, 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 you know what I meant by that though. Yeah. Um, but um, 
the fact that they, you know, take, they act as if they control what education should be. You know, a lot of times they teach things that I don't believe in. And uh, I view that almost as doctrination centers as it is propaganda for, to kids about why, you know, there should be a government and stuff like that. You know, like, you know, yeah. uh, and there's no competition really in the marketplace as it is for education because of the state. Um, so I absolutely, and on top of that, you know, a human being is a human being regardless of the number that's next to their, you know, in regards to how old they are. They still own themselves and they should be able to be given that information uh, freely, you know, uh, it should it should be an issue for someone to go up to a school, of, a high school, and tell these kids like you know, the the system isn't shouldn't be in place. You know, you you really are free. You shouldn't be here right now. Yeah, a reminder that you're born free is so important, but it's something you don't get at government schools. It's funny. Uh, there's really no one who can object to this type of activism. It's so beloved by most people who see it. There are some people who are like, oh, you shouldn't be on the, the campus when they ask us to leave. But otherwise, if it's a video where they're not asking us to leave, people generally like it. And um, I think it's because they know that the schools at some level are in indoctrination center. Like they have your, your, your child for eight hours a day, sometimes more time than the parents get to spend with the child uh, themselves yeah, except for and, when and they're if they take their kids out or whatnot a lot of times the state goes after them yeah, yeah. you know and they'll, peanut, they'll they'll throw the parents in jail for taking their kids out of like what they believe is something that's unfit for their children and the uh, military is perfectly welcome to be on the campus and hand well, out information course. to young people about going and giving their lives yeah, heaven uh, forbid kids leave school, but let's let's get them to go kill a bunch of brown people on the other side of the planet in my name. That sounds like a better idea. Yeah, so it was really refreshing. It's been months since I've posted to my uh, oldest YouTube channel, Freeman TV. It's an oldie, um, started back in 2011, and... Uh, I have the very same high school outreach videos there, but I pumped one out yesterday. Uh, just we went to the s school, Ian Freeman and I, with some of these Philosophy of Liberty flyers, which you can download yourself and print out and hand out wherever you like at freekeen.com. There's a link to them. They're called Philosophy of Liberty flyers. And um, it was two of us. We went and handed out, I would say, dozens. Uh, probably I handed out... I guess about th between 30 and 50 and Ian probably the same. And uh, it took about three minutes and then we walked off campus. We just left. Uh, a couple of students held us and said, they, they had a few more questions like, well, what does this mean? Or what are you guys about? Or um, why are you guys here? And, um, you know, freedom, freedom from government. So they, seem, they sort of seem to know um, of us or know something about... Yeah, uh, during the video, the, you can hear a kid going, oh, Derek's here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I mean, you obviously, in the community, even in the high school, it's like you're well known with the people that live in, in Keene. You're very recognizable. People know who you are. I mean, if you can go up to a school and hand out something and kids there know who you are, you're obviously someone of a personality in Keene that's recognizable. Well, anyone can do this and become recognizable to the young people in their area. It's so um, much more important. I think if you're going to, like I said earlier, I don't do podcasts to reach out to um, people to convince them of ideas. But this really is that. This is, pr this is proselytizing. Yeah. Uh, it's going to people to share ideas, which is not, uh, I don't think it should have the negative connotation of propaganda, but you know, if you're going by the definition, that's what it is. But I think it's uh, propaganda for the best ideas. So the idea that you're born free. Yeah. And you own your life and you don't own the lives of others and no one owns your life. So I, I, right. I think that's just an important basic starting point. And it's not one that students get. Like in this Keene school, uh, there's a student who's been sitting for the Pledge of Allegiance. And she's been doing it all year. I think she's like 12 years old. Uh, 14, and, 14, I believe. It's amazing. Okay, yeah, thank yeah, yeah. you. Well, it's a hero. It's, well, she was yelled at when she got a new class. There's a uh, cooking class where the teacher said, well, if you're not going to stand, then you have to stand outside. 
And so she made her stand outside, even though for the rest of the year she had been sitting and it was never a problem, but this new teacher uh, punished her for it. All because she's not going with her religious beliefs. Yeah, now the um, Keen Slantinel did a, a report on the story. The public, or the uh, school newspaper did a report saying how, how this girl should have stood for the, the Pledge of Allegiance. And I mean, there's so much authoritarianism and propaganda inside the schools uh, for people to object to uh, people handing out a couple of informational flyers um, to the contrary, I just think is, is uh, unfounded. It's, com it's insane to say they could have you for eight hours, but you, I can't have them for three minutes. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> so, it's crazy. So no one really uh, does complain, but the, there's a new principal there at the school. So when we go back next week, who knows if they'll be a little more ready. Do you plan, how often do you plan on going back? I think about once a week. We used to pick different days of the week so that it didn't become a regular planned thing. Mm -hmm. It would make it longer for the cops to show up because I was detained and banned from this school. Ian and I both were for the time of a year. I'm still banned from all Keen schools, so I can't do this at any Keen schools. This is in Swansea. Oh, oh, wow. so that's how you get around the loophole, go to a different city. Well, I was banned for a year there, but it's been three years since then, <laughs> and so I uh, just returned. How are they only ban you for just one year? I don't know. Maybe they'll change the ban next time. I mean, I don't want to give them any hints, but that, <laughs> yeah, that would be the thing to do. Keen did it. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh like we did that. On, we've so far we've done it once here in uh, in Manchester. Now we did it when it was like in January in the freezing cold. Like uh, that was hard, dude. It was, that was really, really cold. cold. We got we woke up super early before the yeah before the yeah. School and day. we did it for uh, school sucks project because yeah. there's a bunch of lit for that, and uh, that's a great resource to go to for anyone who's interested in unschooling or uh, you know homeschooling or whatnot. Uh, did the kids ask project. you any questions? Um, one kid came back and wanted another flyer, which was kind of cool. cool. Yeah. yeah, he wanted to share it yeah. or put one we on. Did, his... We did get confronted by the principal, uh, and that's on camera. We have that. We actually posted that where? on Freaking. It was on Freaking. I know, but where were you confronted? Uh, right outside while we were handing out uh, flyers. Were you on a public sidewalk? Yeah, yeah. Because in Manchester, it's a city. Like, there's not a uh, campus proper where people. There's like a parking area, and like we walk up to their sidewalk. It's literally on the sidewalk. This is the, on the public street. sidewalk yeah. where anyone can walk. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. how could she object to you being there? I mean, that is a real tragedy. The Commons issue. Oh, I, as soon as we brought up, uh, uh, is this public property? Ugh. Well, yeah. I asked. I asked if it was a public yeah. school, and the yeah. guy was like. Yeah, but I need you to move across the street. I hate that. I hate pointing out tragedy the commons issues. Like that is one that this school outreach thing boils down to. Because if my kid were going to a private school, there's no way I would let some crazies come and <laughs> proselytize to my kid, even if they had good ideas. Like, hey, I'm gonna be more in control of that. But at state schools, they can't can't control that. No, because if they try to control that, they'd be violating the First Amendment. Well, that they're yeah, it's their issue through. for coming up with a tragedy. So, anyways, really quick, thing. Derek. Uh, where can people find you at? TheDerekJ.com. TheDerekJ.com. Shire Dude? It's all at ShireDude.com. And go find all of our content at the new RebelLoveShow.com. And we're out. Peace. Peace. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism,